Hello, what I want to go through with you in this quick flip video presentation are different ways that individuals actually go about earning different wages and earning different income. Companies pay individuals their income or their wages in lots of different ways and lots of different formats. Sometimes it's in a commission, sometimes it's in an hourly wage, and that's what we're going to look at in this presentation. The first definition that I want you to copy down in your notes is the definition for gross pay. Gross pay is the wage, the salary, or the earnings that you make before anything is actually taken out. In a different presentation, we'll look at what things sometimes are taken out. It may be taxes or health insurance, etc. But what we see here with gross pay is this is actually before any of those things are done. So simplistically put, if I make $10 an hour and I worked 10 hours this week, my gross paycheck will be $100. I obviously won't take home that $100 because taxes and other things haven't been withdrawn from it yet, but the gross pay will be my starting point for the most part. Jobs that pay cash, like babysitting, your gross pay typically is what you take home. So if I pay $10 an hour and a babysitter comes for five hours, I'll pay them $50. Their gross pay in that case will also be their net pay, the same thing. That rarely happens though, and in the only instances for the most part are cash type jobs. Let's take a look at different ways that some individuals go about earning their different incomes. One way is salary. Um, salary jobs are basically jobs of, in which you agree upon an actual out, an actual wage for typically it's a year. So for example, you get hired as a individual a computer programmer at Thomson Reuters over in Egan. And they tell you that they're going to pay you $50,000 per year. That's your actual salary. It doesn't matter necessarily how many hours you work. Some weeks you may work 60 hours. Some weeks you may only work 30. Um, it, it may vary somewhere in between. But the point is, is with salary is the idea that you're going to make a, that flat rate. Um, teachers, myself included, I'm paid salary. So when I come in sometimes on the weekend to get ready for the week, I don't punch, punch a time clock. I don't tell Dr. Rakowski that I'm coming in, so to be sure to pay me for that time. The assumption is is that if the work needs to be done, that I'll do what it takes to get it done. And, and that's why a lot of times businesses will prefer to pay salary. Another, another form of income, and this is probably more typical for high school kids, is hourly wage. Simply put, when you come in, you punch a time clock or you sign in somehow, and they're going to pay you a, a per hour wage. Maybe it's $7 an hour, $8 an hour, or, or maybe more. And at the end of the week, they're going to multiply how many hours you worked by that hourly wage, and that's going to give you your gross pay. What I want to go through with you now is another type of wage, a way that individuals earn their income, which is through overtime. Overtime only applies to individuals that are making an hourly wage. Um, overtime is an incentive, so it's a way for an employer to try and, and increase an individual's desire to want to work. Maybe you've already kind of worked eight hours a day, which is considered a full day, and you've worked your full week, and they want you to come in on the weekend and work some more to get some more stuff done. There may be a reluctance on your part to do that. Overtime is an increase in your hourly wage, thus providing an incentive for you to actually continue to work. Um, like I said, it is typically in addition to 40 hours, which is considered a full work week, and it is typically paid out at a rate of 1.5 or time and a half, meaning time, what you would receive for your typical wage. If I made $10 an hour for easy numbers, I would receive time, meaning $10 an hour for that first overtime hour, plus an additional half. So half of 10 is 5. You add those two together, which is 15, which means for every hour of overtime that I work, I will make $15 an hour versus 10. Hence the incentive, which is going to make me want to actually put that time in. Sometimes companies will predominantly do this during the holiday season when there's a huge desire for employees to not really want to come in and work because they want to spend time with their families. I know some places that have paid out at double time and even triple time sometimes. Uh, so you're going from $10 an hour at triple time to $30 an hour. It very quickly makes you decide how much you actually really like your family and want to spend time with them because there's quite an incentive for you to want to go in and, and work. Uh, it also sometimes can be for less than 40 hours too. Uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but again, maybe they're shorthanded and they just need you to stay after a little bit longer in a given shift. Um, that's a possibility. Um, some companies do also do this for anything over eight hours in a day, but it's rarely done um, because people typically will take advantage of that. Uh, when we look at this and what this individual's gross pay would be, you see here that they worked 47 hours. So we're going to assume, unless it states otherwise in the question, that the first 40 hours they're going to be making $8.50 an hour. So you're going to take $8.50 times 40. Then for the remaining 7 hours, the, from 40 to 47, those last 7 hours, we're going to calculate it at time and a half. So you're going to have to calculate what 8.50 is, that's your time, and then half of 8.50, um, and then add those two together to get your hourly wage. 
you're then going to multiply that by 7 to give you what you actually earned for those last 7 hours of pay. Uh, you add that to your first 40 and that will give you your gross pay. It will look something like this. So for an individual's first 40 hours, I said $8.50 an hour, $340. Then you have to figure out how much they're making per overtime hour. So $8.50 times 1.5 or $12.75. So for those last seven hours, the incentive to work was, well, you basically are making an extra, in this case, $12, uh, and are you making a total of $12.75 more than what you had been for the first 40 hours. You then take $12.75 times seven, where sometimes people make mistakes is they'll take 1275 times all 47 hours. It's only an incentive for the hours after, after the full work week has been met at the 40 point. So 1275 times the 7 hours is going to equal $89.25. You're going to then add the full work week plus the overtime to get a total of $429.25. Um, there's other ways that individuals make income. I hope this makes sense. Income, and they if really you have any varied, questions, please um, feel from, free to let me know. Occupation Thanks. to Bye. occupation. Um, some jobs um, are tips. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down three examples right now of jobs that you think uh, or can think of where an individual may earn tips as a form of income or a primary source of their income. Another example of a form of income is interest income. We're right now doing the stock market game, and what you see is the goal is you're going to buy a stock at one price, and then you're going to sell it later when it's hopefully worth more, and you're going to make money on that. That is a form of income, and there are people that that's what they do for a living. Um, that's the way Warren Buffett made a lot of his money is by buying companies and then selling them, or now, just like I said, simply by buying stocks and then selling them at a later point. Even savings accounts, if you have a large sum of money in a savings account, even though it's a very low interest rate, it still may accrue quite a bit of interest. And this is a form of income. And if it clears a certain point, it is possible that you will have to pay income tax on some of that money. Uh, simply put, because in some instances, it's the only way that some people do actually make money. Another example would be commission. This is typically a business type job in which it's a per per item sold or in like a case like real estate, if you sell a house, you may get anywhere from 5 to 8% of that sale price. So if I sell a $100,000 house, I may get or my company may get anywhere from $5,000 to $8,000 depending what my negotiated commission is. Um, sometimes it's also for sales. For the first 1,000 items that I sell, I'm going to get, let's say, a dollar. For the next 1,000 items, I'm going to get a dollar fifty, so on and so forth. And again, that's negotiated as part of the contract. But this is also a way um, that individuals will um, also earn, earn a type of income from time to time. It's important to know that all of these, whether it's hourly, salary, tips, etc., all of them are reported to the IRS, which is the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS is basically the police for taxes. When we look at taxes, um, obviously people want to avoid paying them because it's money being taken out of their pocket. So there's an incentive to cheat and to lie on your taxes. The IRS is the police that tries to enforce the rules to make sure that people are following them, similar to police on the streets that are passing out speeding tickets. Their goal is to make sure that people are following the speed limit laws. IRS are the police that make sure that you are actually reporting all the wages that you uh, earned and you're, you're paying your fair share in that regard.